One more topic that we need to cover when discussing energy, work, potential kinetic energy, all those things, is the work energy theorem. Uh, this is the idea that if you're doing work on an object, you're utilizing some of the energy that you have stored inside of you, or maybe some machine is utilizing the energy stored inside of itself, in order to change the energy of another object. The work done is really a mechanism of energy transfer. An object takes energy it has, it uses that to exert a force across some distance on a second object, which then can change the energy of that second object. If you're lifting something up, the work you do goes into stored potential energy. If gravity does work on an object pulling it down, it's going to decrease its potential energy, but it's going to give it kinetic energy. So we need to be able to work back and forth between those two. Uh, in this case, we want to define what the equation for kinetic energy is. Uh, this equation can be derived using the work energy theorem, so it's a little bit circular, but it comes out of a combination of Newton's second law and kinematics formulas. Uh, kinetic energy, we'll say, is one half times the mass times the velocity of an object squared. Once we know how much energy an object has because of its motion, which we can do by plugging in those individual values and completing the math, that tells us at some moment what its energy is, but it also says how much work had to be done on it at some point in the past. If you have a car that's in motion, it had to be at rest at some point. If it's moving at 10 meters per second at one moment in time, something had to do work on it. Could be the pistons inside of the engine, it could be that it's on a hill and gravity's pulling it down, but it had to gain that speed from some object doing work on it. So let's take a look at just doing some calculations with kinetic energy first though. If I've got a 1.5 kilogram egg joust car that we're using for a project and it's got a velocity of two meters per second, I wanna know how much kinetic energy it has. Like any classic uh, physics problem, we wanna solve it at first by identifying all the variables that are locked inside of the text there. And once we have the identified variables that are given and the identified variables that we're looking for, the unknowns, then we can go ahead and use the equation to substitute and solve. So let's go and write that out. And then we can plug in the numbers and do the calculation. And we should get three joules of energy that this car has at the velocity of two meters per second. If it was going uh, faster, it should have more kinetic energy, but we have to be careful when we're thinking about comparative problem solving, if you were to say double the velocity of an object, it's not gonna double the kinetic energy because the velocity in the problem is squared. Now, let's take a little extension problem and say, well, what if we were looking at the same car, but someone's done work on it, giving it 10 joules of kinetic energy? It's a lot more energy, it's over three times the energy. What velocity would it need to have? Again, we gotta be careful not to think that because we've tripled or doubled some output that an input had to be doubled or tripled. We need to be careful and make sure we do calculations. Although we can be pretty confident in saying that if the kinetic energy of the object has increased, then the velocity should have increased as well. So we should end up having more than two meters per second of velocity. Let's go ahead and set up the variables and then set up the equation. And then we can plug in some numbers and see how we're gonna solve it. Now in this case, we can see that the velocity is the object, I'm sorry, is the quantity that we don't know. So we're gonna have to apply basic algebra tools in order to solve it. Uh, we can combine together the 0.5 or 1.5 and the 1 half and get 0.75. We can divide that from both sides and eventually square root. That'll leave us with v should be equal to the square root of 10 over 0.75. And if we calculate that, we're not going to get four or six or 10 or something like that for the velocity. We're gonna get kind of a weird number, which is why sometimes we have to use our calculators of 3.65 meters per second. So is it going faster than two meters per second? Yeah, definitely. But it's not going three times faster. Again, the change in velocity will end up being squared, which has a much greater impact on the end result than just simply doubling it or tripling it. Okay, let's take a look now at that whole work energy theorem that I mentioned before. In that example two that we have up above there, uh, all the work that's done on the object is going to accelerating the object. It's going to changing its velocity. We could technically take an object and throw it up into the air 
we could give it velocity and we could give it height, which would change its potential and kinetic at the same time. But let's just focus on one. Um, any sort of work that we do lifting an object would change potential energy. So we could say work done equals change of potential energy if lifted up straight up in the air. But if something's just accelerating, we can say that the work goes into changing kinetic energy. We can say that work equals delta Ke. And the kinetic energy change, I mean, sort of delta would be a difference the final minus the initial, the new minus the old. And so we would say that kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial should be equivalent to the work done. We started with some energy, we started with some ability to do work, then someone came along and changed our kinetic energy by doing work on us, that mechanism of energy transfer, work done, physical pushing and pulling, or I guess if it's gravity, we can say it's a force at a distance, but the Me mechanism of energy transfer, the work being done, is going to alter how much kinetic energy the object has. This is called the work energy theorem for kinetic energy. Let's go ahead and try it out on a problem here. Uh, it says using a mousetrap, I'm sorry, using the mousetrap work calculated in previous notes, and uh, I've got those numbers for us. Assume that the amount of work done on is done on a 1.5 kilogram car like we had up above. If the car starts from rest, what will be its velocity after the work is done? So in this case, asking students to use their own values from their own labs, I'm going to use a value that we had from some previous calculations, which was, I believe, 0.9. So I would have work done on uh, the car from the mousetrap that's attached to it of 0 0.9 joules. Now, all mouse traps are going to do different things. There's going to be friction involved. Energy is not going to be perfectly transferred, but we're going to assume a perfect world because that's what we do in physics problems. I would also have that the mass is equal to 1.5 kilograms. The original velocity would be equal to zero, and the final velocity is what we're looking for. So if we apply this work energy theorem, we say that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. I can go ahead and do kind of a double substitution here. I can replace work with whatever its calculation is, and I can put in the formulas for kinetic energy down below. So let's do that. Now since I didn't have to calculate work in this case, I already had the value for it. I don't need to write in force multiplied by distance, but I could. I could do that substitution. Uh, in this problem, the initial velocity is zero, so that means this whole term is just going to disappear. There's no kinetic energy in the beginning. Car was at rest. It's unable to do work. And I've got the other values, so I can go and plug those in. And once I get those values plugged in, it's the same thing as the previous example problem. We can solve for the final velocity. Uh, 1 half times 1.5 is 0.75. We can divide both sides by it, and then eventually square root. We should have the velocity equal to whatever 0.9 over 0.75 is square rooted. So let's calculate that. And on my calculator off screen, I get 1.095, or about 1.1 meters per second. So nothing crazy fast, but 1.1 meters per second, that's a pretty brisk walk. If you imagine a little car, it's about one and a half kilograms traveling at a brisk walking pace, all because a mousetrap pushed on it. That's not too bad. So we're going to utilize this work energy theorem in the future, but for now, that's all we got in these notes.